So I'm kind of excited about today's video. It's something a little bit different than what we normally do. Right in behind me is my latest listing at 3905 West 19th. I'm gonna take you inside and take you on a tour of that listing. But more importantly, I think we're gonna learn some lessons from this listing all about the Vancouver real estate market. There so you're go. gonna wanna stay tuned all the way to the end to really get some key takeaways about what buying in Vancouver, what selling in Vancouver is really like. And I'm gonna get you to guess what the listing price for this home is. You're gonna have to stay tuned all the way to the end to get all of these details. Let's go inside right now. All right. Love these porches, don't you? I love porches like this. And look, I'm just staring right across. These are a little bit overgrown, of course, and could be uh, pulled back a bit or maybe taken out and something much smaller put in because you have a really nice view here of the surrounding neighborhood. We are on a corner lot um, and you can see such a lovely neighborhood. We're gonna head right inside. Now, we have a lovely entrance right here. Coat closet. And unusually in this house, what we have are two living quarters. There's this main floor. Upstairs, we have a second floor right through here where uh, that's a separate unit entirely. There were two people that lived here. They shared the house together. Something that was a little bit uncommon when this house was really renovated in the 80s. Um, but this house is built in 1926. It is on a double wide lot. And that is gonna be significant for some of the lessons that we're gonna learn about Vancouver's real estate. Um, but it is 66 foot wide and 122 feet deep. And that is for the city of Vancouver, about it is double the standard lot size. Now you can see this room. This is one of my favorite parts of the entire, the entire home. Just windows on all sides, overlooking the beautiful garden, lots. It's not terribly landscaped at the moment. This is something else we're gonna be talking about in a little bit. You see in the backyard, all that dirt down there. Well, it was beautifully landscaped, but there was something that had to be done before this house was put on the market. And then we walk into the kitchen. You have a lovely picture window right here with a little breakfast nook, and then you have you know, a 1980s renovated kitchen. I love this old stove. I don't know how old this is, but it feels like it was designed to be a little bit retro, um, maybe made in the 70s, I would say, perhaps to, to look like a, a stove from the 30s or something like that. And you have these long corridors, uh, lots of separation in the rooms. This whole house, is about uh, 3,500 square feet. I don't have exact measurements just yet. This house hasn't changed hands for a very long time. I just had people in here doing photos, videos, uh, virtual floor plan and, uh, sorry, virtual tour and a floor plan. So once I get that floor plan back, I'll know exactly how big this house is, but uh, this is one of the bedrooms on the main floor. You can see these old houses had really small closets. This is not something that we'd be happy with today, but what they do have are these beautiful hardwood floors. Sorry, not hardwood, but these are fur, so it's a softwood, and lots of large windows. Um, there's lots of light that comes into this house. Another thing about these older houses that people today don't absolutely love is that we generally just have one bathroom per floor. Um, and you can see, don't you just love this window, I love that. Um, too bad we don't put stuff in like that anymore, but great privacy and a, a real shot of character. But yeah, we just have this one bathroom per floor. And obviously today, what's more common in new houses is that they, they add one uh, bathroom per bedroom, uh, if you can imagine that in comparison to what people were living with. So we had very different standards. And if somebody wanted to purchase this house, you see once again, one of these really small closets. If somebody were to purchase this house and decide to renovate it, I would assume they're looking for places that they're gonna be able to put more bathrooms in and also more closet space. A lot of storage is what people are looking for these days in Vancouver's market. And now we're gonna head upstairs to that second level that I was telling you about. Um, and here we go. I really love this floor. And this floor, what it has, something that people really do look for on the west side of Vancouver, these big windows, just a wall of them, and then views of the mountains. Ideally, you also get a view of the ocean, of course, but um, a lot of these old trees uh, are blocking some of that significant mountain view that you would have at this level. So up above, you definitely have 
mountain views. And on this floor, we have two more bedrooms. So a total of four bedrooms in this house. Um, and then we can check out one of these. These are really prime bedrooms. So I can imagine, and much bigger closet space you can see there. I can imagine if somebody were to buy this house today, what they're gonna do is they're gonna turn that main floor basically just into their daily living space. And then this upper floor will be where the bedrooms are. And they will generally add, make sure that there's at least three bedrooms. Uh, generally, they're gonna want a big master suite. They're gonna want some big closets and a big master bathroom. And then they're gonna want at least two bedrooms for the children, perhaps a fourth bedroom if they can find space for it. And then you might be able to in this particular uh, house because uh, each floor is about 1100 square feet. So that's pretty sizable. But at the moment, again, we just have this one bedroom here, or sorry, one bathroom. And again, that lovely glass, I, I really do love that. Uh, but a lot of the character of this house that was built in 1926 was taken out of the house when it was renovated in the 70s and 80s. And you can see that here. Uh, this is definitely not original. The kitchen for the upstairs unit. Um, so it is, a, you know, the way that it was used is to, to be able to split the cost of purchasing a house between two families, two people. And that was really effective for people that, you know, are connected um, today. This would not be something that most people would be doing, but you could purchase this house and you could divide it into a duplex uh, if you wanted to retain the house. And we'll talk more about that again, but let's have a look in the basement. So, so far we've looked at two floors. It's a two level house with a basement. We're gonna check out that basement right now. I hope you don't scare easily because this is a little bit spooky. I'm okay, are you okay? Are we gonna, should we hold hands? Let's, let's head downstairs. All right, this is one of those original Vancouver basements. This is something that you see a lot in these older houses. In these houses built in the you know, early 1900s, well, in fact, the 1800s, but in the early 1900s, they did generally put, uh, you know, in the 20s and 30s, they're gonna put a concrete floor. Earlier than that, you're generally gonna find that it was an earth floor that they had because it was really used for nothing. But in this generation of house, you're gonna find a concrete floor. Um, and this was generally used, as you can see, they, it's kind of cold storage in this room. And we see a, a couple of these rooms around. Um, and then over here, you see the workshop area. So uh, this is where, you know, you're, you're gonna tinker on stuff around the house, fix things up, uh, a nice big workshop. And this is also where the utilities are. So we have our hot water tank and our furnace, and obviously these were modernized, much newer, both just a few years old. And something that wouldn't have been here originally, of course, either is the laundry. And so now you have this in-suite laundry. Um, so these particular owners did some updating and you can see behind me, or sorry, right here, um, updated wiring and a new panel um, the furnace was updated in the hot water tank, of course, and then adding the, the, the laundry to the house. But these are things that obviously would not have been original to the house and add value. But if somebody was to buy it today, they're gonna to be really happy to see that the wiring was updated. They're gonna be happy to see that the furnace was updated, but they may not choose to keep it this way. They may choose to, you know, most likely somebody's gonna to wanna to use this space when they're paying the kind of money that is being paid for this house, you're gonna to wanna to utilize the basement. This space ends up being utilized much more today than it once was in a much more productive way. And we'll talk again more about that in a minute. And now that we've given, gone through the tour, let's head back upstairs and talk about some of the lessons that we're learning from this house about Vancouver's market. So one of the most important things that we're learning from this particular house is that its location really matters. This is in Dunbar in Vancouver's west side, and this is one of the most desirable family neighborhoods in the entire Metro Vancouver area. This is an area that people really desire to be in, and they're looking to move into this area with family. And when they're looking for some of the best areas, they're motivated by walkability, they're motivated by proximity to downtown, perhaps where they're working, but also things like their leisure. They're looking at that proximity to uh, UBC, which is not too far away, and the ocean and the mountains and downtown Vancouver. So walking along the seawall, going down to the beach, um, and heading into Dunbar to get some groceries or to do your banking and that type of thing. So this type of neighborhood is at the very 
peak of desirability when it comes to what families are looking for. Oh, and I forgot about education. Schools, of course, some of the best private schools like St. George's Private School are not very far away. And some of the best schools as well, like Prince of Wales or uh, Kitsilano High School. And so there are, there's a, a huge driver for people with families to be looking for where are the best schools for my children to get the best quality of education. And when they're done with elementary school and, and secondary school, in terms of post-secondary, they can still live at home and head out to UBC, which is a quick bus ride from where we are right now. So location matters immensely when it comes to, to the value of property. And this property would be considerably less expensive if we we're just looking on the east side of Vancouver. So even within the city itself, um, but some of those more desirable East Vancouver locations would be fairly expensive. Um, but some of the less desirable, say more suburban areas, less walkable areas, you're gonna see the prices start to drop for these really big houses on big lots. Speaking of big lots, one of the things that we learned from this is how valuable the land is. It is something that I think people really struggle with when they're coming from other markets that are much less expensive. But really the key thing to take away here is how much value is in the land. And when we take a look at this house, I mean, it's a charming house. There is some character to it. It's lovely, it's been cared for, but obviously there's a lot of work that needs to be done as we spoke about to bring this up to a modern standard. And so the value isn't in the house at all. What we're gonna get value from here is the land and its location is highly important and makes the land much more valuable. But really all the value here is really in the land and we have twice as much land as is typical for Vancouver. So there is a lot of value here. And it's important to note that these kinds of homes aren't around that much anymore. So with the city of Vancouver, it's very hard to subdivide land that is any smaller than this. This is a 66 foot wide lot, and it's basically a slam dunk. A developer is gonna know that they're gonna have very little problem subdividing this lot and turning it into two new homes. So from a developer's perspective, this is highly desirable because they can build on this double lot. Um, they can build two houses and resell them and they sort of divide their risk. It's not just one house that they're building. And the price point, you know, when you're looking at new homes in this neighborhood is pretty substantial. And so there is a lot of potential profit for a developer, a builder, when they're looking at a property like this, because they're not just building one house, they're getting to build two. And so more and more, we're seeing fewer of these old houses that haven't been renovated, that haven't been converted, and they get sold and they generally will find a developer who wants to purchase this kind of property. And if you are thinking of moving to Vancouver and looking to buy a home, whether it's a big old house like this and you wanna do some development, or whether it's a one bedroom condo, whatever it happens to be, I've helped hundreds of families move to Vancouver and settle in finding the right home, I can help you as well. My contact information is right here on the screen. Reach out anytime and we can get that ball rolling. Now let's get back to the video. Now this is a really interesting one for anybody who's moving here from somewhere else. What you might not know is that oil tanks are probably the biggest issue when it comes to purchasing an older house. And this particular house had an oil tank. Basically any house built before the 1960s was heated with oil at some point. And that heating oil was delivered to the house. There was an oil tank in the backyard. And then when the houses were converted to natural gas in the 60s, those oil, old oil tanks were generally left in the ground and they were decommissioned. The oil was taken out of them, uh, but always a little bit of oil was left in them, unfortunately. And over the course of 50, 60 years that have been between then and now, um, water accumulated in there and it could have corroded those oil tanks. So it becomes an environmental issue because the oil that's in it is a contaminant and we don't want it leaking in our ground and leaking into other people's properties. So the government mandates, if you know that your home has an oil tank, you can't actually sell it with the oil tank. You have to remove it. And you are also responsible for the environmental cleanup. So it can be a really big headache, especially if the oil tank, if you're on a slope, the oil leaches into the neighbor's yard. And worst of all, if it got under your foundation or the neighbor's foundation. So there's, there's a big process, it's a long ordeal, and the risk is pretty significant. 
the bill, if it's really bad and you're on a slope and it's leaked under a bunch of neighbors' houses and under their foundations, it could be millions of dollars potentially. So you really wanna be aware of that when you're purchasing a home in Vancouver. This particular house had an oil tank. That's one of the reasons you can see down there in behind me, all the, the soil, it's been dug up. So there was an oil tank that was found. Uh, they had to do soil testing. They had to dig it up, take it out, test the soil, see how much oil contaminant was in it. And there's a certain level where they can stop digging. So they had to come back uh, one time in this case and make sure that they had gotten all of the contaminated soil. Luckily, it didn't, we're on a flat lot here, so it didn't go over to the neighbors, thankfully. It also didn't go under this house. So it was rather contained, but even still the bill was somewhere in the neighborhood, I think of 20 or $30,000. I know in my personal experience, my mother's house, we had a bill um, where there was an oil tank in the ground and it had leaked over to the neighbor's yard. Luckily, again, not going under our own foundation or the neighbor's foundation, but just because of the number of times that they had to dig up the soil, how much oil had leaked from that particular tank, that bill was close to $50,000. So these bills are relatively small. I mean, just removing the oil tank alone might be around 5,000, but the more it's leaked and the more issue it, there is with where that oil has gone, the more expensive it can become. So definitely something you wanna be aware of when you're looking at purchasing a house in Metro Vancouver. Now we're back in the basement. I wanna talk about basements once again. Basements are something that have value in Vancouver. I know in a lot of other markets, we don't include or you don't include the square footage of the basement in the measurements of the house. In Vancouver, we do. Now, this will be added to the square footage of the house. It'll be noted as being unfinished, but there is a portion, you know, even though it's, it's old, that's been, that has been finished, this bedroom here, um, and people are gonna use it, and people are gonna convert this basement. It's got a nice high ceiling. It's probably just shy of eight feet here. Um, but people are gonna convert this basement into living space. And depending on who purchases it and the kind of pockets that the money that they have, they may choose to keep this as part of the upstairs space. They may develop this house and keep the house and develop it into a half duplex, two half duplexes. Uh, and probably I, I would say a side by side, a half duplex, most likely perhaps put another property, another home in, in behind and stratify the entire thing. But if you were converting this into duplex, it would make sense to use this uh, basement as living space for the entire home. Um, but the thing that most people are doing in Vancouver, in Metro Vancouver, is converting a space like this into a suite. And the thing is, when prices are as high as they are, this could be a very significant amount of income and a huge part of your mortgage that you could help pay off. Myself, I do own a, a house in Vancouver and I have a, a, a basement. I have a two level house, so it's not really a basement in fact. It's um, above ground, above grade. Um, a really nice living space, but these days a space like that in a, in a, in a typical home, you're looking at about $3,000, $3,500 in rent. So it can be a very substantial income that you're getting to help you pay for your mortgage, which a lot of people are looking for. But I'm also finding more and more that people with a significant amount of income, they don't really feel like they need it. And it's becoming harder and harder to find houses without suites in their basement. And so more often I'm finding clients who are trying to find a house that doesn't have a suite and that can be hard to find. So it really depends on who the end buyer is for this particular house and what they decide to do with this space. But I can guarantee you it won't be left like this. Right in behind me is the electrical panel. So another important thing about buying a, an old house in particular is the kind of wiring and it can be quite expensive and problematic if you still have the old, uh, the electrical system. And especially if it is knob and tube, there's most uh, uh, insurance companies these days will not insure you for electrical issues if you still have knob and tube wiring. So one of the big expenses for people that are buying an older home is upgrading, plumbing would be one, but also the electrical system. It's definitely something that people are gonna want to do when they buy an old house. And when you're looking at houses built in the early 1900s, that's something that you're gonna wanna be thinking of. It's not really an issue if you're looking at houses built in the 90s and beyond, uh, but so many of our Vancouver houses are old and they have older infrastructure. 
Unlike this house where it's already been updated, we have that, the new electrical panel, we have a new hot water tank, we have a new furnace, and a lot of the plumbing has also been updated. So you don't have that old copper plumbing anymore. You have PVC plumbing. That's a lot easier to work with and much less likely to, to leak. Those are things that you're gonna be, wanna be looking for also the drainage on the exterior of the house, as well as the age of the roof, those things are a little more obvious, but plumbing, electrical, those systems aren't as obvious to a lot of people when they're coming from other markets. And you really do want to avoid issues with your insurance. You wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to cover all of the potential risks that you take on when you own a home. Um, and you don't want anything like the electrical to be excluded by the insurance company. One other key takeaway here is the importance of you, especially at the higher price points and especially on the west side of Vancouver. People love views and they are gonna pay a premium to be able to have those views. You can see in behind me there, that's the North Shore Mountains, Cypress Bowl in particular, still has some snow on it. Uh, it hasn't been a great snow year, unfortunately for the skiers amongst us, I'm not one of them. I can't afford to take my family of six skiing, unfortunately. It is so expensive these days. But nevertheless, you can see the mountains, you can check out what the snow is like, and you can decide from your home whether or not you wanna go up in the mountains or not after work. A lot of people do that. Um, so views are really key. Uh, in this particular neighborhood as well, um, you know, you have a lot of houses that are lower down, and those houses won't have the kind of view that this one does as it stands, or the house that could replace this house, the kind of views that the new house could have. So really significant in terms of the price point and the desirability. And another thing would be the fact that this is a corner lot and corner lots are really desirable by builders. And again, because this is a double lot, it's already desirable for builders, but because it's a corner, it's even more desirable. It makes it easier and cheaper to build. It makes it also more desirable, the end product that they build, whether it's keeping this as a, as a residence that's divided between two families, as, as a duplex, one entrance could be on the side street and one could be on the front. They could potentially build a laneway or a coach house in the back that's not only facing the alley, but it's also facing the side street. So it has more of a feeling of its own home rather than being on the alley. And those things are all highly desirable and make this property even more desirable for potential buyers. And I almost forgot about the, the asking price. I asked you to guess at the beginning and I'm sure you've been thinking about it throughout the video. Well, I don't have an exact number just yet because this house is actually gonna be listed next week. It's gonna be listed before I post this video, but it's still too early to have decided on the exact price point. I'm working on that with my client, but right now I would say we're looking at a price point of about $4 million. And yes, that is a lot of money. And I know if you're coming from other markets, you're probably thinking, geez, are you crazy, Sebastian? That's insane, that is so much money. But keep in mind how big this piece of land is, how desirable this neighborhood is, and the fact that it could easily be redeveloped into two new houses. And in Vancouver, in this market, in Dunbar, you're looking at about two and a half million dollars per single family plot. This has two of them. And each of those houses is probably gonna sell for about four and a half million dollars. So you're looking at what this might cost, but also what is the output? What could they be making? What can that developer be making or that builder be making? And so they could sell those two homes for about $9 million. Um, and then you have to kind of figure out, okay, how much is it gonna be for them to build those two houses? And that's what we work backwards from. So in this case, that $4 million is actually gonna be a really good value for a developer or an end user, a, a family that wants to settle into a really nice older home. They wanna renovate this and maybe put a laneway in the back. But the asking price is gonna be roughly about $4 million. And once this house sells, I'm gonna put in the comments down below, have a look down below in a month or so, what this house actually sold for, and we'll see how that went. Speaking of buyers, if you are thinking of moving here, don't forget to reach out anytime. I've helped hundreds of families just like yours settle in Vancouver and purchase a home. So if you are thinking of doing just that, reach out anytime and we can get that conversation started. But in the meantime, I do wanna make sure that you're checking out all of my videos because I have almost 60 of them at the moment. And like and subscribe to this video if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more videos just like this one. And comment down below whether you're thinking of buying or not. 
I'd love to hear from you. It's one of my favorite things to hear from my viewers. Let me know what you thought about this video and let me know what you think about Vancouver. And in the meantime, I hope I'm gonna get to see you on some of my other videos. Check out this one all about buying a half duplex in Vancouver. And then this one over here about some of the most family friendly neighborhoods in Vancouver. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on next week's video.